The history of the Peugeot 3008 has been something of an ugly duckling story. The first one couldn't really decide whether it wanted to be an MPV or an SUV, and as a result, it had an odd proportions and a face that was, well, you might call an acquired taste. With the second iteration, Peugeot well and truly nailed its colours to the SUV mast, transforming the Peugeot 3008 into a smart, sophisticated, desirable family car. And the even better news is that in 2021, we've got some updates, making it even more alluring. We'll be examining those updates plus the rest of the car over the course of the next few minutes. But before we kick off, please do subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel where you'll find lots more car video reviews. And if you wish to be informed whenever a new one goes live, simply click the little bell icon and your wish will come true. Most SUVs are all about style, but even so, the 3008 still manages to stand out. It's covered in cool details such as this frameless grille that kind of blends in with the bodywork and these daytime running lights that slash down from the headlights towards the front splitter. They also double as your indicators. All the exterior lighting is LED across the range and all versions have alloy wheels. But before we go any further, let's consider five things you need to know about the Peugeot 3008. The entry-level active premium car gets automatic lights and wipers, cruise control, dual zone air conditioning, parking sensors and a reversing camera. Allure adds part leather upholstery and an upgraded infotainment system that we'll go into in a moment, while GT trim adds full leather and a slightly sportier makeover. In between these versions lie the GT Premium and the Allure Premium. The former doesn't really add much to note, but the latter is really tooled up. Number two, and we said we'd come back to this, and now it's time for the infotainment system. All 3008s get this 12.3 inch configurable instrument panel along with DAB radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Active premium trim comes with an eight inch touchscreen, but from a lure trim upwards, you get this 10 inch screen that also adds nav and voice control. Number three is safety. Now, all 3008s come with six airbags as standard, but the level of driver assistance you get depends on which version you pick. If you go for the entry level model, then you get automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, and traffic sign recognition. If you go for Allure trim, you get lane keep assist, high beam assist, and active blind spot assistance, while GT trim adds adaptive cruise control. The car has been awarded a five star score by Euro NCAP, but that was back in 2016 when the standards were much less stringent than they are today. Number four, plug-in hybrids are a popular choice these days and the 3008 range offers not one but two. The hybrid 225 combines a 1.6 litre petrol engine with an electric motor to give a combined output of 221 horsepower, while the hybrid 4 300 adds another electric motor for 296 horsepower and four wheel drive. Both have an electric only range of between 30 and 40 miles, and both return well upwards of 200 miles per gallon according to official figures. Number five, finally, the other engines available. You can go for a petrol 1.2 with 128 horsepower or a petrol 1.6 with 178 horsepower or if you like diesel, there's a 1.5 with 128 horsepower. The entry level petrol can be had with a six speed manual gearbox, but everything else has an eight speed automatic. One of the reasons why SUVs are so popular is because they combine family-friendly practicality with style. And the 3008 scores very well when it comes to practicality because this boot is a decent size. Now, this particular one has got batteries underneath it, so the boot is slightly smaller. In terms of shape, a nice square shape is good for a boot, and this is about as square as they come. You also get handy catches in the sidewalls of the boot that drop the spring-loaded rear seats, although these do lie at an angle, leaving you with an extended load bay that's sloped. You'll find very little to complain about back here because I'll just get this headrest in, into position. That's comfortable. I'm only five foot four and a half, so I do have lots of space. However, if you're tall, you will find that there is enough headroom and enough leg room. Now, one thing we would say is if you spec the optional panoramic sunroof, that does eat into headroom. So for that reason, you might not want to go for it unless you're my height. What's more, three people will be reasonably comfy across the rear bench because there's a wide middle seat and a flat floor. 
In terms of getting comfortable for driving, Peugeots can be a little bit hit and miss because the company has a design approach called iCockpit. This gives you a teeny tiny steering wheel and you look at your instruments over the top of it rather than through it. Sitting in some Peugeots can feel awkward as a result, but thankfully it works in the 3008 and the seats are really comfortable. Plus there's plenty of adjustment in them so we can go backwards and forwards as you might expect. Plenty of scope to move up for that high commanding SUV driving position and plenty of adjustment there. Also the steering wheel has reach and rake, so that's it. Very comfortable. Whatever you do with it though, you will find your rear view hampered by small back windows. Those digital instruments we mentioned earlier look great and they deliver all the information that you need. And Peugeot's touchscreen systems have got better with time. They're more sensitive and they respond quicker. The operating system is also reasonably logical and these cool looking shortcut switches make it easier to navigate. It is slightly annoying that there are no physical buttons to adjust the air conditioning settings, but on a plus point, this shortcut button here gets you straight to it without too much faffing. Cabin storage is a mixed bag. The door pockets are narrow and the glove box is tiny. However, look under your armrest and you'll find the central cubby that's absolutely massive. Perhaps the thing that grabs you most in here though is the sense of occasion you get. The materials on display are of an impressively high standard and the design is unconventional, interesting and impressively chic with an appealing and thoughtful mix of fabrics, finishes and flourishes. It feels posher than most of the mainstream SUV rivals out there and you could argue that it gives a lot of the premium brands a run for their money. We've tested almost the entire range of engines in the 3008 and there isn't a bad one among them. The entry level petrol and diesels are all you really need. They've got a great blend of performance, refinement and economy. As we said earlier, this car is a hybrid and it's the lower powered 225 version and it gives you something a little bit different. Switch the drive mode selector to electric and so long as there's enough juice in the battery, you'll waft along serenely in the silence. The pickup is strong and eager in this mode too and because there's no gear changing to worry about your progress is even easier especially when zipping around town. Select hybrid mode and the petrol engine will chime in and out when it's needed and not and actually you can barely notice it cutting in and out it's so smooth and quiet especially if you keep your throttle inputs measured and when you put your foot down is smooth and there's a little bit of noise but not too intrusive and you really can pick up quite a turn of speed. The rest of the driving experience is fairly impressive too. Yes there is a rather firm edge to the ride so the suspension can pick up on bumps and ripples that you might not feel so much in more softly sprung SUVs. However it rarely gets to the point of being unsettled or uncomfortable so the family should be pretty happy and when travelling at motorway speeds it settles even more making it a quiet and relaxing cruiser for long journeys. The only thing it can't do is answer the question, are we nearly there yet? What's more, the payoff for this firmness is handling that's pointier and sharper than in your average SUV. The body stays nice and upright in corners with not too much roll and there's a very decent amount of grip to call upon as well. You might find the steering a little odd. Initially, you think it's quite quick, this small steering wheel, but actually it's quite slow in terms of reacting and lock to lock. A 3.10 can feel like a proper workout due to the rate at which you need to fling your arms about. On the plus side, it's light, which is really useful for such manoeuvres. And then, when you're going fast, it gives some really useful feedback to your fingertips. The Peugeot 3008 has always been a super impressive family car with a really great balance of space, style and sophistication. And it's all wrapped up in a package which is well equipped and affordably priced. 
The 2021 revisions have sharpened up that package even further, making it an even more appealing prospect for buyers that want it all from their family car. It's also as good to drive as ever and comes with a wide, not to mention interesting, choice of powertrains. There's of course a myriad of SUVs on the market, so which one you choose will largely depend on whether you like the look of it. And if it is the Peugeot 3008 that you like the look of, then you will be getting one of the very best. We'd love to know if you agree with our verdict on the Peugeot 3008, so please do tell us in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe as well. Why not browse our channel for more new and used car reviews and to find a great deal from a top-rated dealer on your next car, head over to cargurus.co.uk.